that you're all now. What were your early days as a filmmaker like? Can you share with us maybe an unforgettable anecdote when you were doing your first short films? Direct Jade can answer this first. Oh, oh! Uh, I wish I had a lab like this when I was starting out. Uh, I was on the first short film call. I didn't know what to do. I just, I just got a bunch of friends to work together with me. Parang I picked the friend and I go and I went. Oh, you're the DOP. I picked another friend. And I went. Oh, you're my assistant director. <laughs> so, so that was how it went. But uh, we, I think we came up with a pretty decent, decent film, naman. But. I wish we knew more about uh, what to do. So, um, so you guys are uh, here now are luckier. I say you have um, labs like this to help you out. I love it. Parang trial by fire, Shano. Direct yeah. J. Yes, but but it was fun. It was uh, going through fire, pero uh, you were enjoying the flames. Ganun. <laughs> I love it, enjoying the flames. Okay, what about you, Direct Eric? Well, my first short, which was. I didn't know anything about short films. I was into theater at that time. I was still in college, maybe way back 1989. And uh, me and my colleagues in theater uh, wanted to try out doing a short film in the same theater that we're in. And I, I think I was already quite sure about the kind of films I will be doing because we did a horror uh, short film. Uh, about the ghost in uh, Galiaga Theater. That's the name of the theater, named after Peke Galiaga. And it, what was started out, and I think uh, it was ominous on the way I worked, because what started out as a one-day shoot eventually ended up to be four or five days of <laughs> shooting, <laughs> asking the, the theater actors and my friends to come back over and over again just to finish the short film. Um, I, I don't have a copy of it. Uh, I don't know where it was, um, where where we had it, and um, I hope it still works. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, wow. Sana nandun pa rin. Sana we can see it. It'll be such <laughs> a rare feat. But that's great. I think it's amazing that you already know what you were going to do. <laughs> As that's I think that's rare for creatives, right? But thank you so much for sharing those amusing stories. And I hope your stories serve as an inspiration to our emerging filmmakers. Now, how about you, Paolo? You've been quite known to be an award-winning actor, right? And now that you've um, started producing films, what was the transition like from appearing on screen to taking the back seat or like, you know, behind the scenes? Uh, well, first of all, uh, I'm broke now. <laughs> that's it <laughs> that's just I it. Love it I'm kidding it's 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 a pro it's a process uh it's nice to get to know everything behind the scenes and how everything works how the where the budget goes to and and how to cluster everything but uh, I'm still learning and um I can't wait to like uh get to uh, produce another film again so I can even learn more and maybe correct some mistakes I've, I've done in the past. I love it. I think everybody can relate when you said you're broke now. <laughs> Kasi I think parang pinagdaanan nyo ng lahat eh, no? So that's great. Now, um, Derek Eric, as mentioned earlier, your master class session will focus on utilizing mise-en-scene in a story, right? So can you briefly explain what mise-en-scene is? is <laughs> and can you share maybe a glimpse of your process on deciding which elements to include in your frame well i i, I think uh, i don't know if quark was the one who named the the session but mise-en-sen is rarely used nowadays uh it's a french term and uh simply it's just uh all the elements of film put together in one shot and it shows um the skill of the director uh, where to focus the element, which element to bring out, which element supports which one, uh, all seen in one one uh, shot. So the elements could be uh, the camera, lighting, staging, uh, the performance, even dialogue is part of the mise-en-scene. And uh, of course, uh, you have production design, art direction, even sound and music. But uh, in the class I'll be teaching, 
I broke it down to like 25 elements that you could uh, to go into strict detail um, as a filmmaker. And the, the rule there is the more you use the mise-en-scene, the more you use uh, deliberately all those elements, uh, the better you are as a filmmaker. Um, that's how it's gauged. And a lot of times, this mise-en-scene could be used uh, as over-the-top, um, Example of that may be uh, the, the vampire movie of Coppola, Dracula, uh, wherein it's just a bombardment of so much use of misansen that it was just a bit too much for the story. Uh, it, it's interesting and it's fun, but of course, um, it takes a lot more homework from the filmmakers for you to, to be good at it. I love it. So Miss and Sen, it's uh, it's pretty much like Miss and Plus. If you're if you're a foodie, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right? exactly. If you're if it's exactly. it's basically gathering everything, so it's easier for you to kind of put them together and eventually learn from there, right? So yes. that's great. Now um, I'm gonna go to Direct Net Naman. Yes, yeah, she is here, everybody. So Direct, you'll be discussing how to protect your directorial vision in micro-budget shoots. Can you share a moment when you had to revise or downsize a scene just to fit the production budget? Um, mostly, uh, kapag kailangan magbawas ng shooting list, just because wala nang, walang budget. So, parang as a, as a filmmaker... Parang kailangan intact lang talaga yung director statement mo and yung vision na kahit magbawas ng shooting days or kahit merong mga aperia sa, sa shoot. Kunyari, biglang umulan, pero wala na talagang budget for, for a reshoot. Parang kailangan, kaya mong umiisip ng paraan na napoprotect pa rin yung vision mo. Pero, ayun, hindi, hindi naman masyadong masakit sa puso yung ginawa mong compromise dun sa eksena. Okay, I love it. I think that's a testament to how creativity is not only found in freedom, but also in restraint. And I think that's more challenging, diba? So thank you so much, Director Net, for sharing. Now, uh, for Direct Jade, you've worked on films that are quite challenging in post-production, diba? So can you share with us a significant moment from one of your films about dealing with, you know, last-minute discoveries or last-minute ideas during post-production? Ah, okay. It happens all the time in all of my films. And even in films uh, I help uh, with other people. Because, uh, uh, your film really only becomes the film sa final stages. Eh. Um, uh, directing is making a lot of choices and then yung final choices will happen in, in post-production. Uh, so, um, for example, in LSS, um, uh, a lot of those scenes sa, sa dulo are rearranged, for example. You know, um, we had to rearrange sequences so that we could come up with the proper shape for the film and the proper flow. Um, hindi ko na lang isi-spoil. Pero, pero, ganun. No? And even, uh, LSS is a musical, so even some of those um, musical numbers, uh, uh, music by Ben and Ben, we had to re-record them. Or choice namin to re-record some of them. Para mas tama yung, well, technically mas tama, para maging technically mas tama, but also uh, mas bagay dun sa edit. No? So, so may mga ganong mga choices that are gum really important uh, sa final stages. Right, and I think tama ka, Direct Jade, when you said na it happens all the time. <laughs> Parang it's ne- it never ends uh, before post-production. Parang ang dami pang nangyayari talaga pag post but that's great. Now, filmmaking, I think, is really a uh, collaborative and such a dynamic process talaga, diba? Until the very end. Now, for my last question, and this goes to Paolo and all the mentors, with the rise of new technology present in cameras, you know, phones, and other filming equipment, what advice can you give to content creators on how we can best utilize technology to create content? I think Paolo can answer this first. <laughs> uh, well, everything's everything's present now. Um, the main concern always when I think, well, one of the biggest concerns when making a film, I think, is budget. 
and with the rise of smart smartphones you've seen like people do shorts or full length film using a smartphone here and also abroad but it's 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 there's always an ingenious way to come up with with something to set aside your lack of production design or something that you lack uh, with the film you want to do. But uh, yeah, it's a nice, I would say it's a nice start. And hopefully, I'm pretty sure someone will uh, ingeniously come up with like something out of this world with like this, this said equipments that are available now. Yes, tama ka dyan, uh, Paolo. And I think that also circles back to what we were talking about earlier where um, creativity is not just exercise in freedom, but also in restraint, right? Uh, what about you, Direct Jade? What do you think? Oh, what, what about, about content? Yes. Uh, how, what advice can you give to content creators and how we can best you know, utilize technology to create content? I think it all comes down to your personal voice. Eh? Uh, so you, you have to be clear about who you are and and then um, be honest no because uh, um i don't think faking it will get well maybe there are fakers who get far no but i don't think they're uh, in the end that they are what we need you know what the world needs so uh, we need honest people with, with strong voices and i think um if you want to be if you want to pull out content you have to have that and so parang you have to um Kalamu mahanap yung maturity mo uh, and and um, your point of view, you know, uh, to be able to matter to other people. Right, that's great. I think as long as your vision is intact, talaga, you can basically use whatever tool you have available. Right, so right. that's great. Um, Direct net, are you there? <laughs> what do you think? Yes. <laughs> yes. Sorry, uh, come off na lang. Ako kasi yung internet. Sorry po. Pero no I agree with <laughs> Nag-agree na lang kay Direct Jade. Pero I agree with Jade na dahil readily available yung technology, lahat na talaga pwedeng gumawa ng pelikula. Lahat na pwedeng gumawa ng content. Pero ang, nag, ang nag-iiba lang talaga ay kung ano yung kwento na gusto mong sabihin. Parang everyone can make a story pero hindi naman dapat dahil meron kang ganong power ay gagamitin mo na lang siya any any lang at the end of the day kailangan yung story na ilalabas mo hindi lang dahil gusto mong hindi lang hindi parang feeling ko nasa panahon na tayo ngayon na ang mga filmmakers hindi na lang basta dapat naglalabas ng kwento dahil gusto nilang ikwento to pero dahil may katuturan meron siyang meron siyang pagbabago meron siyang insight na bago na gusto mong sabihin i love it kailangan malakas talaga yung purpose di ba so that's great. Um, Direct Eric, may madadagdag ka pa ba dun? Na parang naubos na nila. <laughs> uh, no, I, I I think the access to to technology uh, could make a filmmaker complacent. I think uh, we've seen over the years uh, with the boom of social media, YouTube, uh, even TikTok, that everyone copies everybody. I think uh, right. Uh, J- Jade mentioned it. Uh, keeping a voice but beyond that also is to be to to learn more uh, to do your homework uh, study study the the form you're trying to do and not just uh, yung parang maski pups di ba maski papano lang na tira ng tira if you, if you look at uh, most of the vlogs the famous vlogs that we follow Filipino vlogs they all have the same kind of sound effects that that annoying <laughs> that was the you know, 18 minutes later you know, paulit ulit paulit ulit diba you know, yung parang, but of course um, if if you start if you start doing something unique and different i don't know if you're going to lose some subscribers diba but um, i i think if you really want to be a serious content maker uh, beyond than just entertaining uh, your audience, I think you should uh, work hand in hand with not just what you want to say, but also on how fresh you could uh, tell that story or or tell that particular uh, content, and not just rely on the tricks that are all over the place. Right. I think that's great. So basically, wag mema, 
Di ba? <laughs> <laughs> Or yung sinabi ni Direk Eric kanina, Musky Pops. First time ko yung narinig. Pero I think it's equivalent to Mema. So, yes, you have a story to tell, but you gotta think about, may kabuluhan ba? Ano bang point nito? Anong, anong pinapalabas ko dito? Di ba? So, that's great. Thank you so much. Now, I personally still have so many questions because I think this is such a rare occasion that I'm I, I'm able to talk to all of you. <laughs> but I will reserve them for when I sign up for your masterclass session. So can you all tell us how we can sign up? Direct Jade? Oh, okay. Um, what what are the steps? Let's just script it. Okay, I don't know. Um, I don't know. What's the first thing we should do? Ano oh, ba? yes. Eric, okay, you know Eric? what? Ah, hindi. Ako na lang Alam namin. Ako na lang sasagot nito. <laughs> This is basically open to individuals 16 to 27 years old. Tandaan niyan, guys, ha? 16 to 27 years old who have a story to tell <laughs> and are interested in finding and developing their voices and talents and in filmmaking and yung hindi mema like what Derek Eric said earlier <laughs> diba? so to register just go to www.globevirtualhangouts.ph and share with us why you want to join the masterclass again that's www.globevirtualhangouts.ph and share with us why you want to join the masterclass okay I think may madadagdag pa dito si Direk Eric eh. <laughs> okay. Registration is open starting today until June 1. And our masterclass sessions will happen June 4 and 5 and June 11 and 12, 2020. Yes, okay. So, narinig nyo na from the greats themselves. Save those dates, everybody. June 4 to 5 and then June 11 to 12. Sobrang lapit na. Masterclass sessions with our acclaimed mentors, of course. And you know what? An opportunity to pitch your passion. I think this is the one of the biggest deals ever. An opportunity ha, to pitch your passion projects. And this is definitely something that you cannot miss. So thank you so much again to all our directors for joining us today. And Paolo, of course, we will get back to you later on for more conversations. Okay. Grabe yun. Sobrang kabadong kabado ako. Parang first time kung nakasama lahat ng mga great directors in one frame. But anyway, I did mention earlier... 